Welcome back uh, to our last talk of uh, this panel before our keynote. Um, I'm happy to introduce to you Frederico Sena. He's lecturer at the Center for Interreligious Studies at the Pontifical Gregorian University. In recent years, he has been a postdoc at the University of Naples the Orientale as part of the ERC Synergy Grant, the European Kudan Islamic Scripture in European Culture and Religion. 1150 to 1850. Together with uh, Roberto Totoli, he edited the volume The Quran in Rome, Manuscripts and Translation and the Study of Islam and Early Modern Catholicism. He organized several conferences on the reception and translation of the Quran and Islamic traditions in early modern Europe, with a particular focus on the role played, uh, played by Catholic religion orders. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the presentation, and thank you to Professor Fruchter, to Julian Ardini for this wonderful uh, workshop. Uh, first of all, I apologize for my English that I know is very good, especially the pronouns, but I, I try to explain the best I can. So, my presentation uh, would be uh, divided into three parts. In the first introductory part, I will contextualize gender issues in the studies on the, uh, on the history of Muslim-Christian relations. And in the second, I will illustrate the long-standing nature of anti-Islamic polemics and rhetoric in the early modern age. In particular, I will focus on the topic of repudiation. That, that was one of, of my main concerns of uh, Catholic uh, missionaries. But there are also other topics like the polygamy, um, the sensual paradise, the sodomy, and so on. The third part is where I will deal with the connecting role of the Virgin Mary, uh, with, who takes on in missionary literature, focusing particularly on the linguistic dimension of this function. My paper will be, therefore, a discussion on, on the literary, rhetorical, a linguistic dimension of the missionary writings, understood in their broadest sense. That means that I will focus uh, also on the work of uh, Catholic Arabists uh, who were not uh, strictly speaking uh, missionaries. Uh, the issue of gender has been ever present in anti-Islamic European Christian literature since the advent of medieval Latin translation and polemical literature. According to Norman Daniel, that was one of the first scholars who studies the history of Christian-Muslim relations, or, or better, the uh, Christian understanding of Islam, he said that there is no su subject connected with Islam which Europeans have thought more important than, than the condition of Muslim women. In fact, when Norman Daniel published the first edition of his pioneering book, Islam and the West, the making of an image in 1916, the entire fifth chapter was dedicated to what we might refer to as gender issues. This chapter is called the place of self-indulgence in the attack on Islam and dealt with the classic dams of the moral, sexual, anti-Islamic polemic, based on the dams of polygamy, repudiation, carnal paradise, sodomy, and uh, this kind of uh, topics. These topics, which were mainly form formulated by Eastern Christian during the Basid age, that means uh, since uh, the 8th century, 9th century after Christ, and were widespread in the Latin West, starting out from the 12th century, had such a long life span that they were still widely present in the 17th century missionary literature. But in fact, we can find this topic and these uh, stereotypes also in the beginning of the 20th century in some uh, articles on Islam. Even though, it, even if it remains a book that is still useful today, at least as a thematic selection of uh, medieval anti-Islamic controversies, for which, among the authors, Edward Said drew his reference to the Middle Ages in Orientalism, Daniel's work has numerous 
flows. Uh, according to John Toran, one of the main scholars of the uh, history of Christian-Muslim relations, the information we can attain from Daniel's book, including the plentiful manifestation of gender controversy, tell us very little about the context, the social and cultural causes that produced them. This is true. However, however we should remember that the anti-Islamic uh, writings tend to be decontextualized for many real cultural and historical and geographical contexts and repeat the same stereotypes from centuries in places that were culturally and geographically distant from each other, such as the Iberian Peninsula, Baghdad, Jerusalem, Aleppo, and also China, uh, but united by a supposed single common denominator, their, their adversity to Islam. In fact, we know that some missionaries in China ask for uh, a copy of uh, the manual, the handbook to convert to Muslim of uh, Tirso Gonzalez de Santalia, uh, the 13th uh, Superior General of the Society of Jesus. As a conclusion of this introductory part, uh, we could depict as a suggestion the gender issue in anti-Islamic literature with Jadik Butler's words concerning some feminist theories with, which tend as well to construct a third world or even an orient in which gender oppression is subtly ex explained as symptomatic of an essential non-Western barbarism. This is exactly what anti-Islamic writings did when dealing with the subject of women in Islam, expose Islamic barbarism by showing the conviction of marriage and sexual relation. It is evident that the status of women in this context and their marriage were a kind of testing ground for the otherness. And this, this is especially true in the case of Islam, because, for example, you should remember that Peter the Venerable the, the Abbot of Cluny, who led the group of translators of the Quran in the 12th century, asked, but are Muslim pagans or, or heretics? So they are in the Middle Ages still a, a complex debate on what really Islam is, an heresy from Christianity or a kind of uh, paganism? This book is the my text, uh, which the medieval translation was known in the in the early modern age, is uh, printed in Basel uh, by the reformed theologian Theodor Bibliander, and contains the Latin translation of the Quran and the, all the the main uh, um, polemical text. Uh, it's interesting because in the Marginalia we can see some. Uh, um, debate between against Catholic Church who uh, call into question the, the gender questions. For example, talking about uh, when he translate, when um, we have the description of uh, the Islamic paradise, Bibliander in the Marginalia said they have never seen the sky over Rome. So this is an example of uh, how gender uh, debate uh, going, on to, uh, going also into the, the doctrinal debate between Christians. Along with uh, the questions of strictly more theological nature, such as the denial of the Trinity, the denial of Jesus as the Son of God, the accusation of heresy and plagiarism of Jewish and Christian scriptures, a conspicuous part of anti-Islamic writings consisted of uh, criticism and accusation regarding the way Muslims would conceive of the role of women in marriage and in general of uh, an excess of lust on the part of men. Among the Islamic practice that impressed the Christian, in particular, was the legal practice of the tahil, which was not permitted, however, by all Muslim Jews, including the well-known Hanbalin Ibn Taymiyyah. This practice became so popular among Christian polemicists that, according to Daniel, Tahil became almost an obsession with the Christian West. This practice was based on the interpretation of two verses of Surah al-Baqarah, the Surah number two of the Quran, 
on the divorce at Talak, which state, we will read only the main verses, the beginning, divorce may be retracted twice. Then the husband must retain his wife with honor or separate from her with grace. And then going to the verse 230. So if a husband divorces his wife three times, then it's, it is not lawful for him to remarry her until after, after she has married another man and then is divorced. Then it, it is permissible for them to unite as long as they feel they are able to maintain the limits of God. This has, these are the limits set by God, which makes clear for people of knowledge. In other words, Tahil allowed a man who had already repudiated his wife three times, the number of times beyond which it's, it is not possible to remarry, remarry the same woman, to have the woman in, enter into a fictitious mar marriage with another man, go through the divorce with this another man, and then remarry her first and original husband. The controversy against this practice is also found in the Arabic text of, of, of the famous uh, Rizal al-Kindi, a uh, text who was also translated into Latin, but was made renewed in the Latin Christian West by the 1314 Dominican friar traveler to Baghdad and polemicist he called to the Monte di Croce, who increased the popularity of Attalak and Attahil with both his liber peregrinationis, but especially with the well-known and famous, uh, one of the most famous uh, polemical uh, book against Islam, Contra Legem Saracenorium. In this, he describes the Tahil as follows. Hence, when they themselves want to make such a reconciliation, they pay a price to one blind man or another lowly person to recognize that woman and afterwards publicly, publicly, publicly testify to this and say that he wishes to divorce her. If he does, he can be the first to reconcile her to himself. Sometimes, however, the latter are only pleased with themselves because they say that they do not want to separate it. And then the former, having lost his price, his price and his wife, is frustrated in his hopes. So this is a, a tragic event, we can say. As we can see, Ricoldo made an authentic caricature of this practice, which, however, also had a lasting echo in early modern missionary literature. Let us see some 17th century missionaries and Arabic writings as examples. Just as the writing of missionaries in Asia or the New World are rich in, eth in ethnographic information about local population, their customs, religions, and so on, the works of missionaries in the lands of Islam inform us in the same way about many aspects of Muslim life from an ethnographic point of view. Accordingly, during the golden age of Catholic Arabism, many missionaries traveled to the Middle East. Among them, between the 60s and the 80s of the 17th century, the Capuchin Michel Febvre and the Jesuit Michel No both traveled to the Holy Land, Aleppo, Baghdad, and other places in the Levant. In the Levant influencing each author's writing and competing with each other. They both printed books full of information regarding the culture and religion of Muslims that went far beyond uh, the stereotypes of the medieval controversy, not only providing information of the, on the Sunni majority, but also describing the tradition of minorities, such as the Druze, the, the Yezidis, the Mandeans, the so-called uh, Christian of St. John, and also mentioning legal and theological schools and the various Islamic sects. However, compared um, to other religions, 
religions, Islam was a different matter. It was a religious tradition, as we have seen, that uh, had been well known from, for centuries. The theological status of Islam was unique and presented particular doctrine, doctrinal problems compared to other religions discovered between the 17th and 18th century. It follows that, although presenting ethnographic elements, as we said, acquired in the field, the writings on Islam of the missionaries of the early modern age repeat and present the same stereotypes, the same impressions, and sometimes the same insults as their medieval precursors. Taking the Capuchin Michel Febvre as a, an example, as his, his uh, medieval precursor, recalled the Monte in Croce, that was a Dominican, uh, Febvre was concerned with the topic of repudiation and tahlil. And his book, in his book, Teatro della Turchia, published in um, 1681, he recounted this practice, but with a more comic slant, and alluded to the possible ma marital incidents what could face with the following words. And we read uh, this, uh, this uh, part that is very interesting. At, the other, at other times, there was a blind man in Baghdad, to whom the repudiated women were used to turn, to be rehabilitated by him, and made fit to atone with their husbands. Each of them cherished that he should exercise this office more readily than any other, in the hope that, being blind, he might not be taken in by their lust, and considering them all equally beautiful. It would be easy to take them from his hands. One day, however, the blind man was informed that he had laid one of them who was the most accomplished and the most graceful in the world city. And he became so, so fond of her that he did, want, he did not want to let her go back to her first husband, who was urging her to be reconciled with him, already regretting repudiating her so that, in order to have her back, he had to capitulate to the blind man and give him a large sum of money to make him agree to part with that object, objecto in Italiano, the woman, he said, with object, which had so captivated his imagination. This is one of the incidents uh, the Capuchin uh, tells, but on the, on the structure of the narrative of Ricoldo da Monte di Croce. So the event is the same, but uh, with more, with, we could say comic, also dramatic uh, elements in this uh, narrative. Even for the traveling companion and contender, Michel Nau, a Jesuit, in his two volume books, published in 1684 and followed by Fautor Reprints with the title L'Etat Présent de la Région Maumetan, the issue of repudiation and tahlil was still a scandalous concern to be explained and critically in a stereotyped manner based on cliché. He said, if a man has divorced his wife three times, he may not take her again until he has given her to another man, and that man has enjoyed her, so there is a sexual allusion, I, I think, and after a while divorced her as if he had been her husband. This work, I think, are interesting because while they were the fruit of the missionaries' field work, we know that uh, these two missionaries were in the Levant uh, many years, they were intended for a much wider audience in Europe, uh, being printed in numerous editions and translations. It is therefore not surprising that the properly ethnographic dimension and the medieval anti-Islamic rhetoric are flanked, flanked and are mixed by a narrative, narrative, anecdotal and perhaps even comic dimension more suited to a broader audience. As we see, little changes However, except for the absence of 
anecdotal overtones on the other side of the Catholic missionary activity toward Muslims, a kind of internal mission toward Muslims in the Bayer Peninsula. In the Handbook to Convert the Muslim, uh, published the first time in 1687, but with full edition and translation, a more technical, influential, and theological book written by the missionary and the professor of moral theology, uh, Tirso Gonzalez de Santaya, polygamy and repudiation were considered to be forbidden not only by divine law, but also by natural law. In fact, Tirso Gon Gonzalez was more concerned not by repudiation, but the the sensual paradise. He made in this book a long polemics against the, the Islamic understanding of par paradise as a place with a beautiful woman, beautiful uh, garden, places, uh, stones, uh, fruits. This is uh, in his book, the minor, we can say, gender polemics. Well, I'm now entering in the third uh, part of uh, this uh, talk. In Christian-Muslim relations, especially for those who engage in approaching Islam with a knowledge of Arabic language, there was one woman in particular who reached the status of liminality, the virgin Mary. In the case of uh, the Arabic-speaking Islam <coughs> that, I, sorry, <coughs> that I'm dis discussing here, Mary became a connecting figure between the Catholic missionaries and Muslims in the early modern age. She assumed uh, a function closely, closely linked to the native language of the people to be converted. Uh, as we can see in conversion narratives, narratives and in Arabic grammar, grammar manuals from missionaries. Mary also became a, li a liminal figure in early modern Christian-Muslim relation because of some Quranic verses, which were often quoted in anti-Islamic and missionary literature as a further proof of the Immaculate Conception. This, is, this was not an entirely new trend, since from a, as early as the 14th century, but also in the 13th uh, century, Christian scholars had been aware that some Islamic tradition from both the Quran and Hadith literature claim the freedom of Mary and her lineage, that means Jesus, from Shaitan. A main source of this information were the quotation in Ramon Marti Pujo Fidei, a book of a Dominican friar who who knew very well Arabic, Jewish, and uh, who, who wrote in, in his book many quotations from the Quran, that is uh, literature, and also from Al Ghazali, for example. And this is uh, an image in the, in the 17th century printed version uh, of uh, the Puj of Fide, which was a very important uh, book. Also, Tirso Gonzalez uh, know this, also, there. Uh, Catholic uh, missionary use the, the quotation in this book. The, um, it was uh, in the Berian Peninsula, uh, uh, in the period after the conquest of uh, Granada, that the attesting of the Immaculate Conception through Islamic sources became an ever more widespread practice, especially in the so called uh, literary genres book of the anti al -Quranes. This is a very interesting kind of book because they used to write in cooperation between Catholics and converted to, to Christianity. The most known and translated book of this, uh, of this kind um, uh, was the seminal polemical work by the Muslim Fakih a jurist converted to Christianity, Johann Andres, called Confusion or Confutation de la Secta Maometica y del Alcoran, where he explicitly stated that, according to the Quran, Mary was conceived without the original sin, como fue concebida sin pecado original. 
also another writing, in this case with many quotations in Arabic and also in a transliteration from the Arabic, was Johann Martin de Figueroa, La Lumbre de Fe contra el Alcoran, where, although mention, not mentioning the, the original sin, he praised Mary and her de descent to be protected uh, from Shaitan, El Diablo. Uh, even according to the Quran, the Quran and Muslim exegetical literature. But especially the first one book is uh, very important. Uh, that it was translated also in Italian and quoted uh, at least uh, until the 18th century. The reference to Mary, signless conception, is a clear allusion to a verse in the Quran, in the third surah, which reads, I name her Mary, and I commend her and her offspring to your protection from the rejected Satan. The Arabic word is Ashadan Arajim, that means uh, uh, the Satan to be stoned, the Islamic practice to, to launch stone to, to Satan. <laughs> this is a very significant verse in early modern Catholic literature. The importance of this doctrinal debate within Catholicism and abroad on the Immaculate Conceptions was also reflected in the 17th century narrative of conversion for Islam to Catholicism that were often used for missionary purposes. A 17th century example of this trend was the story of Baldassare Loyola Mandes, born as Muhammad Dattasi, a Moroccan Muslim ruler, ruler who became a Jesuit and Catholic preacher among Muslim slaves. The account of was conversion, Emanuele Colombo has demonstrated to be entirely guided by the figure of Mary. There is a close link between Mary and Baldassare Arabic motor languages. In narrating his conversion, Baldassare re reports a sentence the Virgin Mary pronounced to him in Arabic during an, appar an apparition. This sentence was transliter transliterated into Latin characters and translated into, Balda uh, into Italian by Baldassare himself in his autobiography as follows. Ad naudic pepni, and in Italian translation, the Baldassare Italian translation, ti piglierò per, per mio figlio. Interestingly, the Arabic sentence Mary pronounced to Baldassare could have a precise meaning in Arabic and could be read in a modern transliteration as Ana Akuduka Bibni. That could be I take you as a son of mine. In contrast to Jesus, who appeared before Baldassare speaking in Latin, Baldassare uh, speaks a lot about the apparition of Jesus. <coughs> speak him in Latin and uh, give many uh, sentences in Latin. Uh, Mary was the figure who had a direct connection with uh, to Baldassare's cultural and linguistic roots, uh, who was leading him from the darkness of infidelity to the light of the true religion by communicating with him in his native language. The connection between Baldassare's conversion and Mary was highlighted immediately after his death, uh, in, the course of his, in the course of his funeral sermon, delivered by Pedro Francisco Esquez, a Jesuit, in Madrid, who claimed that, as Toda de Maria su conversion, and explicitly quoted the verse, of, the verse of the Quran, the Jesuit during the funeral mentioned the, a, a verse from the Quran, of, uh, on, on the Immaculate Conception, saying, no one is born from the sons of Adam whom Satan does not touch, except Mary and her son. So, um, this is a, a clear uh, quotation and doing this uh, same. So this is not only no, uh, things that we say today, but also immediately after his death, uh, the Jesuit know that. The understanding of the Virgin Mary as a bridge between Christianity and Islam was also empowered by the information the missionaries acquired in the land of missions. To the scriptural knowledge of the Quranic verses on Mary, 
the missionary literature reports on cases Muslim and Christian sharing holy places, sacred luoghi, devoted to the worship of Mary. Again, the Capuchin and Michel Febvre recounts an, an experience which occurred in Baghdad when Muslim women entered the Capuchin church and prayed to the Virgin Mary, beating their hands to their chest. And this is the, 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 the record of by Febvre. Although they believe have to be bless, blessed in heaven, and as distant from us as the Empyrean is from the heart, yet they do not deny, like the Huguenots, and we see the intra-Christian polemics, that she cannot hear our prayers, and that those prayers are not revealed to her from God, which we have addressed to her. How many times have I seen Turkish women weeping, wailing, and beating their chest before the altar of the Capuchin Fathers in Baghdad dedicated to the Virgin Mary? So, besides the scriptural knowledge of the Quranic uh, surahs, there is also an experience on the field of the common uh, places shared by Muslim and uh, Christian. Consequently, hymns dedicated to Mary also appear in Arabic language, manuals for missionaries, both in those containing a de-Islamized Arabic, such as uh, Victorio Shalak Introduction at Grammatican Arabicam, published in Rome in 1622, which contains the Magnificat in Arabic, and in those with a clear missionary intent toward Islam. This is the case of the Flores Grammaticalis Arabici Idiomatis. That is very important grammatic because it was also reprinted uh, by Propaganda Fide uh, in um, uh, 1845, after the missionary encyclica Probe Nostis. So this is interesting that they reprint this with explicit reference to Muslims, not other grammar with no reference to no other gram Arabic grammar with no reference to Muslim. Uh, published in uh, 1687, this manual of uh, Arabic grammar was authored by the Franciscan Agapiti Avalle Flemalu, who studied the Arabic in San Pietro in Montorio in Rome in 1680, uh, 16, and later became a professor at the School of Oriental Languages in the Seminary of Padua, uh, the same place that where was printed the, the Quranic translation of Ludovico Maracci, the Quranic Textus Universus, the main uh, uh, Arabist work of the 17th century. This grammar does not separate and estrange the Arabic language from its Islamic, cultural, and religious context, but on the contrary, he takes full account of it by quoting the Quran and explicitly addressing the infidels, namely Muslims. Therefore, it's not surprising that Agapitus also includes an Arabic Latin passage of the Annunciation of the Angel to Mary among the exercises of language, which was a familiar event among Muslims and narrated in, a, in the Quran in Surah. 19, albeit with a different uh, account uh, respect to the gospel. However, don't believe that uh, also uh, this have a totally de Islamized Arabic because uh, for calling uh, Mary the Virgin, of course, uh, you don't uh, call Mary with the Quranic uh, word for virgins because uh, we know that in Quran there is uh, the Huri that uh, were the awaited the virgins in the paradise, a very contested world for its origin that is not clear. But there is also another world in the Quran that is big, bigger, in a, mainly in, a, in plural, abkara, but uh, it doesn't use this word. He used the word uh, I think it's not uh, written uh, correctly in this uh, Arabic uh, sentence, but Limariam uh, al uh, that means uh, Mary the, the case, the pool. This is not the, the word for virgin we, we find the Quran. The case? 
yes, the, the, the pure. Pure. La casta. The case, yes. Chaste. Ah, chaste. chaste. Ah, sorry, chaste. The oh, chaste. Mary okay. the, sorry. The Mary the chaste, yes. That's what we thought. No problem. So, um, Mary became an universal, we can say that Mary became a universal figure of salvation. Was role uh, toward, towards the Muslim was also recognized by the, the most famous Arabist of the 70th century, Ludovico Maracci. As I told the translation, the translator of the Quran from Arabic into Latin. In his final work, L'Ebreo Peso Pelebone, that uh, we, we should translate as the Jews was uh, uh, taken with the good manners, uh, I, I think. Uh, Maracci in this book was attempting to persuade Jews about Jesus' identity as the Messiah and claim. Is it, is it not true that today this virgin is rare, invoked, recognized as a perpetual virgin, as the mother of the Messiah, not only by all Christians throughout the world, but also by all Mohammedans? and that the Al-Qur'an himself confesses that she is superior to all the women of the world and that she is from all guilt, even original guilt. According to Mariachi, the fact that even Muslims revere, invoke and recognize Mary as a perpetual virgin and mother of the Messiah, whom the Qur'an itself acknowledges to be superior to all the women in the world and free from guilt, even the original guilt is yet another proof of her bliss and messianic mission of her son Jesus. So we can see how uh, the question of Mary is uh, uh, connected uh, also uh, also <coughs> level of uh, religious <coughs> polemics, uh, not only the, um, the polemics against the Muslim, but also the polemics, uh, intra-Christian polemics, and also the debate, the polemics uh, with the Jews. Because what this is, I think, one of the first uh, book with a uh, with uh, mm, uh, and not uh, bad uh, so bad words against uh, the Jewish community. It's, it's a, a book of uh, we we cannot say about bad dialogue, but uh, of course a, a a good manner between the two community. Um, Mary's role as the universal savior has already been highlighted by scholars both in its political and in its strictly religious dimensions. However, I believe that her relationship with the mother language of the peoples who were to be evangelized should be further explored, especially in the case of attempts to evangelize Muslims, being Mary a figure belonging to the Islamic tradition, present in the Quran, in Hadith literature, and venerated in religious practice, as we see in the example of Baghdad. In this paper, I've tried to show how gender issues in Catholic missionary literature addressed to Muslims in the early modern age take on different functions. On the one hand, as a marker of Islamic barbarism. On the other hand, with the elevation of, of the figure of the Virgin Mary as a universal, universal savior and their closeness to the modern language as a bridge for the conversion of Muslim to Christianity. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.